Hello, um, I'm Harriet, I'm the head of Swoop Patagonia um, and I'm going to be talking about trekking and what you would need to take on a multi-day trek in Patagonia. I've spent months trekking all over Patagonia from Torres del Paine, my first treks were in Aysen, in the Argentinian Lake District, all over the place. Um, so this is going to be an introduction into what you'd need if you're going to be camping out at night. Um, so first of all, I'm going to start with the boots. Um, you need a waterproof boot, um, which has got an ankle on it. Look for something with either a Gore-Tex liner or a leather lining. But it is important to have an ankle. This is because the conditions can be quite wet in Patagonia. Um, next up, you need to make sure you have a good pairs of socks. Um, I would um, prioritise socks more than other people do. Um, what you need to make sure is you have a, couple, a clean pair for every other day. Um, so it depends on the length of your trek as to how many you take. In Patagonia, the weather conditions can be really variable. So you might have, be trekking in a t-shirt one moment and then putting lots of layers on um, the next moment. So it's really important to have lots of different layers um, rather than um, just one fit coat. So what I'd suggest is you have a base layer, um, something that's really quick drying. You might get wet and you want that, that base layer to be able to dry. Um, next, it's good to have a sort of mid fleece um, and that's something that you might wear for trekking. And then in, you need to have a waterproof layer that will go over that, both the top waterproofs and the bottom waterproofs. Now this is the bit that people often forget, so remember, you do need um, waterproof trousers. It is quite good to have another layer that you would wear around camp in the evening. You're unlikely to need that when you're trekking, you might put it on when you're crossing a pass or something like that. But um, yeah, you, that's really good for the, for the evening. You might sit around um, in a mess tent and you'll need that. On your legs, um, I typically wear a pair of leggings, um, so women might like to wear them. But the most important thing is, once again, they're quick drying. So a pair of trekking trousers, you might want a couple of pairs of those for longer treks. And it's good to have a change of clothes to wear around camp. You might get a nice warm shower at some of the campsites. I'm not gonna promise them throughout Patagonia. Um, but yeah, you, it's good to have a, a change of clothes. So gaiters, um, it's really good to have a pair of gaiters on most of the treks. This is because you are, might be crossing a pass where there's some snow and also just in the wet conditions. Um, when I was in Patagonia living for three months, I just spent my life in my gaiters. So yeah, those are a good addition. Um, it might seem strange, but you need a sun hat and a warm hat and some waterproof gloves. Um, don't forget your, your sunscreen and your sunglasses around camp. You're going to need your head torch um, and the jury is out on whether you should have trekking poles. I would say take trekking poles, particularly if you've used them a lot before um, when, you're, when you're trekking, then that's a really a good idea to take, take those trekking poles. You can sometimes hire them in Patagonia if you don't have any. So if you want those, get in touch with us and ask if you can hire some. You'll also want a good water bottle. I go for something that is about one litre um, and something with a wide mouth for filling up from streams. On the majority of treks, you will need to bring your own sleeping bag um, here and sleeping mat. So this is one of those small sleeping mats that um, it's got like the chambers and it compresses. These are brilliant. This is my favorite one, the Firmares Neo Air, but there are similar ones which are like re really good and lightweight. They're so small now. Um, Sleeping bag wise, I sleep quite cold, so I would go for quite a warm bag of about minus 10 um, lower comfort level. So what you're looking for is something where you're going to be comfortable down to temperatures of about zero degrees Celsius or minus five degrees Celsius. Um, and so you're looking for a three to four seasons bag where the lower comfort level is anywhere between minus five degrees Celsius and minus 10 degrees Celsius. Obviously, if you're going in the, in the shoulder mumps, you'll need a colder bag, whereas in, in January, you'll need a slightly warmer bag. I have this really good um, dry bag to keep my sleeping bag dry. Down versus synthetic sleeping bags. 
If you've got a down one, then just bring that. But if you are buying, then I would get bring a synthetic one for Patagonia. Once again, Patagonia can be wet, and so it's a good idea to have, have that. Um, and then while we're talking about waterproofing things, I tend to have a series of dry bags. Like I keep everything that I take with me inside. Um, so I pack my, those into, everything into these and those into my bag. You might want to have a big liner. Some of the people prefer to have a really big liner and they put everything in that. You could just use a black plastic bag or something like that. Quite often when people haven't bought them, that's what their guides will give out. Um, a word about these waterproof covers. These are no good in Patagonia. It can be really, really windy um, and these, the wind just catches these and blows them away. So don't bother with those. Rucksack. So the size of your rucksack will depend on the, the level of support you're getting on your trek. So if you are going on a trek with porters, then generally it's better to have um, a duffel bag with you or you can give the porters your big um, backpack and carry a day pack which is 20 to 30 litres but for the majority of people you will be carrying your own um, sleeping bag and sleeping mat. Um, all the camping and cooking equipment like the tent and the food and things like that are generally carried for you so it really is your personal belongings that you will need to carry um, yourself so basically everything that I, I've talked about today. Um, in some cases, if you're going on a more off the beaten track trek or you're going on an expedition, then you will be expected to carry some of the cooking equipment um, and some of the food um, and, the, and the tent. And so you'll be given a portion of that. So what I would say is if you are going on that sort of, of trek, you'll need a, a capacity of 65, 70 litres um, and you'll be carrying about 20 kilos, so 40 pounds worth of, of stuff. Um, but on the whole, what you're looking for is anything between um, 60 and 70 litres for your backpack. I think it's worth making sure it fits you, so if you're buying a new one, um, then make sure you get someone to fit the backpack in the same way that you would get someone to fit your boots. Uh, make sure the back length is, is the right length for you um, and that you've put some weight in it and check that it is really comfortable. Um, the final thing that I have not mentioned is your buff. It's really important to take your buff with you. Um, you can use it to protect your face from the wind. You can use it as a headband. Um, we are a big, big fan of buffs. And so finally, I also want to talk about um, if you haven't got any gear, um, if possible, try and borrow it from a friend. Um, you don't need to buy everything new. Um, it's really good to do your bit for the planet and not end up with a cupboard full of unused gear. So either use what you've got, if where possible, borrow from your friends, and we can sometimes hire out gear um, from the start of your trek, so do ask about that. Um, I hope this is helpful and have a fantastic multi-day trek in Patagonia.